Hello everyone. I've had this interesting microchip lying around and used for a long time, even in its factory packaging. But today we will disturb its peace. The microchip or microassembly is from 1987, manufactured in the USSR, of course. At the time, it was used in computing equipment. As a voltage regulator, it is now quite rare. You heard right, it is indeed a voltage regulator, specifically a linear type regulator. Today, such microchips are not popular because their counterparts are much cheaper and more compact. Our microchip is similar in characteristics to the popular integrated regulator. 7812. It's an entire family of microchips. In my hands is the KMP403EN4A. And today we will see how it is constructed and what it is capable of. First of all, it's worth looking for the technical documentation and understanding how it connects. Fortunately, I managed to dig up the complete technical document online. Based on this document, we see that the regulators are quite specific. They were intended for use in measuring and computing devices. The microchip includes 11 transistors, including a power transistor, a couple of capacitors, resistors, and a Zener diode. The maximum dissipated power is 1W without a heatsink and 20W with a heatsink. Depending on the index, the voltage variation can be either 2%. Below, we see a table with the main characteristics of the microchips in this family. In the case of our microcircuit, the input voltage range is from 2, 27V, the output is 12V. The output current can reach up to a nominally and up to a maximum. The microchips are equipped with short circuit protection. In the event of a short circuit, the current will be limited, and according to the specifications, it will not exceed 600 milliamperes. There are many connection schemes. Here, you can adjust the protection current by selecting the appropriate resistor and change the output voltage in either direction. I will assemble a circuit with protection and the ability to adjust the output voltage by replacing the specified resistor with a variable one. The resistance of the protective resistor can be calculated using the following formula. I quickly drew the board and put it in the etching solution, but I remembered about it only after a few hours, resulting in overetching with the formation of a mesh, but tinning will cover up all the defects. Before soldering everything together and checking the stabilizer's operation, we'll open it up. Literally. Let's not forget, this is the Soviet Union, and here you can unscrew and fix everything if necessary. Even the microchip. Under the plastic cap, we see a piece of ceramic with traces. Most of the components are coated with something for reliability. The power transistor stands out, a very full-sized KT819. So, if the microassembly suddenly breaks and the cause is the output transistor, it can be easily replaced. There shouldn't be any cooling issues, the transistor is through thermal paste. By the way, the substrate of the microassembly is aluminum with a fairly large area. We put everything back together and solder it onto the board. Let's move on to testing. First, we'll check the stability of the output voltage. Power is supplied from the laboratory power supply. When the input voltage changes, in the range from about 14 to 29 volts, the output remains very stable at the level of volts. Excellent. Let's continue. We'll check the range of the output voltage adjustment. Here, I'll note that on the board. Initially, I included an additional 1 comb resistor in series with the variable resistor. If you install it, the minimum voltage from the stabilizer will be about volts, but the adjustment will be very smooth. Later, I replaced this resistor with a jumper and the minimum output. The voltage was reduced to volts. Although the smoothness of the adjustment suffered, but overall everything is adjustable. The stabilizer handles short circuits very calmly. Moreover, in short circuit mode, the output current is limited to 280 milliamperes. With a good heatsink, the stabilizer can remain in short circuit mode indefinitely. For a long time. And now let's see what it can do. But first, we evenly apply thermal paste on the substrate and prepare the microassembly for installation on the heatsink. The heatsink is from a computer power supply. It's a bit small, of course, but we won't be stressing the microchip for long, so it'll do. The output of the microchip. We will load it with an electronic load. 
the lower indicator on the load will show us the output current value, and the upper one, the output voltage. And the input parameters are visible on the display of the laboratory power supply. By the way, during the measurements, there will be some inaccuracies due to instrument errors and losses. We will apply 20 volts to the input and slowly load the output of the stabilizer. At a current of 1 ampere, everything is fine. At a current of amps, everything is not bad either. At 2, in principle, it's the same, the stabilizer holds the current. Ah, there are voltage drops, but they are insignificant. When trying to draw more, the output voltage starts to drop sharply, and then the protection kicks in. I remind you that the declared dissipated power with the heatsink is 20 watts. During the measurements, we loaded it 50% more than the permissible value, but the chip handles it calmly. Calculating the efficiency doesn't make sense. In all linear circuits, it depends on the difference between the input and output voltage and the output current. The efficiency here is as expected for a linear regulator. Overall, it's a pretty decent regulator, but unfortunately, using it for any serious purposes doesn't make sense as it can't compete with the versatile and popular LM317 regulator. Our chip can't withstand the competition. I just wanted to show you another one. An unusual, now forgotten retro component. In future videos, I intend to test Soviet radio components for compliance with their stated specifications. Support this idea and let's see how components were made in the Soviet Union and how good they are. All additional information is in the description. With that, I have to say goodbye. And as always, this was Kazian K with you. Until we meet again, bye.